The chromatic button accordion is popular in Europe, but not generally known here in America. For that reason, there are a lot of misconceptions about it. In this video, I'm going to talk about various aspects of the chromatic button accordion. But to get the most from this video, I recommend that you first view another video in Roxy's YouTube channel, a video called Piano Accordionist Learns Chromatic. It will give you some valuable background. In this video, I will expand on my earlier presentation by dispelling a few myths about the chromatic, as well as give some additional learning tips. Still, be aware that both videos, the previous one and this one, do not represent music lessons. The music lessons that you should follow are in the books that I recommend in these videos. There's no need for me to repeat in video form what you can already easily learn yourself from a book written by a qualified and accredited teacher who has truly mastered the instrument. While I'm on the subject of books, did you know that if you purchase a new Roland FR1XB, FR3XB, or FR8XB from Roxy's, you will receive absolutely free a copy of the Mulgain book which I recommended in my previous video. This book teaches the chromatic from the ground up. Also, if you purchase an FR1XB or FR3XB, you will also receive absolutely free a Getting Started video DVD worth $80 that fully explains the operational features of your instrument. Features such as how to select various accordion, orchestral, and organ sounds, different playing modes, how to configure your instrument's internal parameters so that it is optimized for your playing style, and most importantly, how to use the user program feature to create multi-part orchestrations of your performances. There's even a section to help you connect your V accordion to the popular BK7M backing module. Note that all of these operational features are common to both the piano and the chromatic button styles of the instruments. Although in the Getting Started DVDs, you will see me using a piano version of the instrument, like this one, to present the various features, everything that I say in the DVD applies equally well to the chromatic version as well. Let me be very clear about that. The DVDs are really about the features of the instrument itself not the style of keyboard. All operational features work in exactly the same way on both styles of instrument. Piano accordion, like this one, or chromatic button accordion, like this one. The Getting Started DVDs for the FR1X and FR3X apply equally to both styles of instrument. No other dealer is able to provide you with such detailed information on how to make best use of your instrument, and it's all presented at a relaxed, easy pace that anyone can understand. It even includes a memory stick that contains student examples of what you see in the DVD, as well as some handy charts that will help you find different features on your instrument. A popular version of chromatic button accordion is a 5 roll, like this one. However, the fact is, the basic instrument itself, that is, what makes it a chromatic button accordion in the first place, is really only 3 rolls. Counting from the outside edge of the instrument, the first roll, the second roll, and the third roll. Collectively, they are often referred to as the bottom rolls. So, the basic instrument consists of only these buttons. The extra two rows that you see on my instrument, the fourth and the fifth row, are duplicate rows. And as such, they don't actually provide any new notes. To say it another way, notes that the buttons in the fourth and fifth row provide already exist on the bottom three rows. Mm -hmm. 
Row 4 is a duplicate of Row 1. All notes in the first and fourth rows are exactly the same. Row 5 is a duplicate of Row 2. All notes on the second and fifth row are duplicates of each other. An important fact about the chromatic button accordion is that by its very name, it provides all 12 notes per octave, seven naturals and seven sharps or flats that are defined in the Western music system for each octave that the particular instrument supports. A second important fact is every note that the instrument is capable of producing has its own button somewhere on the lower three rows. The basic instrument. There are no repeated notes on the lower three rows. For example, on my instrument, the note G appears here on the second row. This particular G happens to be repeated on the fifth row. But don't think about that just yet. Right now, I want to talk only about the basic instrument, the lower three rows. Of course, there are other Gs on the lower three rows belonging to other octaves. And not surprisingly, they occur at buttons on the same row as my earlier G, the second row. And it's the same for any note that you pick. This is no different from any piano or piano accordion where there is one key for each note of each octave that the instrument is capable of producing. Again, I wish to restrict my discussion to the basic instrument, the lower three rows. To play a complete scale in any key signature requires all three lower rows. For example, in the key of C major, only the C and A are on the bottom row. The other notes that constitute the scale are somewhere on the other two rows. The E and G are on the second row. The D, F, and B are in the third row. Knowing all of this should now give you a better appreciation for my previous statement that the basic instrument consists of the lower three rows. All chromatic button accordions need to have, at the very least, these lower three rows of buttons. To actually play the scale in the key of C major, I would press the following buttons. A three row diatonic button accordion looks very similar to the lower three rows of a chromatic, but don't be fooled. On a diatonic, each row represents a seven note per octave scale of a particular key signature. A popular configuration is the GCF diatonic, in which case the first row contains all notes in the key of G, the second row all notes in the key of C, and the third row all notes in the key of F. Unlike on a chromatic, on a diatonic, you can play a complete scale using buttons along only one single row. In such a system, many notes are repeated on different rows in different places. Some notes appear on all three rows, while others like C-sharp, D-sharp, and G-sharp, which are not part of either the G, C, or F major scales, do not appear on the instrument at all. That's right the instrument is actually missing those notes. Obviously, the design of a diatonic is very different from that of a chromatic. If you are unsure of what a diatonic button accordion is, 
I do say a few things about it in my previous video called Piano Accordionist Learns Chromatic. Incidentally, Roland makes an electronic diatonic button V accordion. It's called the FR-18. So, getting back to the chromatic, all possible notes that the instrument supports appear on the first three rows. So, why then have duplicate rows? Why repeat on the fourth and fifth rows notes that already exist on the first and second rows? Well, those extra rows, the fourth and fifth, provide certain playing advantages. For example, as I demonstrated in my previous video, on a five-row chromatic system like this one, I can play the scale in any key signature using the very same fingering simply by moving the starting position of my hand. That's a great feature, but when first learning the instrument, it's important to realize that these extra rows, the duplicates, the fourth and fifth row, are not actually a necessary part of the instrument. Indeed, if you are learning chromatic by following an accredited lesson or method book, which I recommend you do, the lessons will encourage you to fully master the first three rows before venturing out to the fourth and fifth rows. Some chromatic accordions are built with only the three essential rows that constitute the basic instrument. That was more the case in the 1930s and 40s. Here's one example. The musician happens to be a well-known and respected accordionist, Alf Hagedel, and he's playing a vintage chromatic accordion. When many American accordionists see such an instrument with its three rows of buttons on the treble side, they immediately think that he's playing a diatonic button accordion. Indeed, the two instruments, three-row chromatic and three-row diatonic, look exactly the same. But trust me, he's playing a chromatic button accordion. It just happens to be one that does not have the extra duplicate rows. One style of chromatic accordion that is popular in France uses four rows on the treble side. It consists of the same three essential rows that are basic to all chromatic accordions, plus an extra fourth row that is a duplicate of the first. Here's an example. Incidentally, the musician in that clip is the famous Manu Mogain, who, if you watched my earlier video called Piano Accordionist Learns Chromatic, you already know is the author of the lesson or method book that I use to learn chromatic accordion. How about that? But most chromatic accordions today are built to have five rows, as in the following example. In that clip, the musician was Richard Galliano, who is not only very famous as a performer worldwide, but also, like Manu Mogain of my previous example, is the author of a popular method book. A lot of people like the Galliano book. I own both the Galliano and Mogain books. I happen to prefer the teaching approach and practice exercises in the Mogain book, but that's just a personal opinion. Both books are good. Note that the Galliano book teaches both chromatic and piano accordions. In contrast, the Mogain book specializes exclusively on the chromatic. Some people who own five-row chromatic button accordions play exclusively on just the basic instrument. That is, they use only the lower three rows, and there's nothing wrong with that. 
Here's an example using the same model V accordion that I have, the Roland FR1XB. She is obviously a very skilled accordionist. Indeed, this video is one of Roland's official promotions for the FR1XB. Yet, if you watch her carefully, you will see that she does not take advantage of the duplicate fourth and fifth rows, and I'm sure she has her reasons. In my opinion, it doesn't make her any less an accordionist. The point I want to make is, there are different approaches to playing the chromatic button accordion and one may not be necessarily any better than another. It's really a matter of personal preference. The extra rows are there if you want to use them, but you don't have to if you don't really want to. I hope my presentation so far has cleared up a few doubts or concerns you may have had about chromatic button accordions, but I'm not done yet. Indeed, I have several more things to talk about. I'm currently working on a second part to this presentation. Look for it soon on Roxy's YouTube channel.